Go ahead and start the meeting. Call the meeting to order on Monday, the 23rd at 6.30. We're here at the Fairhaven Grade School. Let's first rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for the Senate, the God, and the soul of the Lord <laughs> yeah. All right, looking for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. <clears throat> um, I believe there'll be no policy briefing. Is that correct? Correct. Other than that, I don't see any other changes. So if nothing else, all those in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 Yeah. Next, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from January 9th. So moved. Second. <coughs> have a change request. To what? To add me to as a member for Hubberton. <laughs> Is this the, uh, the minute you're talking about? Yes, under the, um, it has the list of members and if their attendance. It's important. I've been completely removed, so I didn't know if there was something that I missed. Oh, we didn't tell you that? <laughs> it is. You only get, what, one absence or two absence? Good catch. And I was here about eating, so. Okay. Is there any other corrections or discussion points from those minutes? All right, hearing nothing further, all those in favor of approving the minutes with uh, the one correction noted by Christina, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, we do have some students here tonight for a presentation, so I'll turn it over to Deb for introductions. Great, thank you, Board. Ms. Paquette and I are um, happy to welcome three of our kindergarten students who are here this evening. <clears throat> we have Charlie, Leah, and Stella, and they're here with their classroom teacher, Mrs. Greener. Kindergartners have been learning about their community, and they are here with you tonight to share what they've been learning and how they've been um, engaging the community in this process. So first, before you begin, I want to say thank you very much for volunteering and having the courage to come here tonight, even on a snow day. <laughs> so I am super proud of you. Ms. <laughs> here and take it away. And you might want to come closer this way to the microphone if folks okay. are going to be speaking. Yes. All right, so Charlie, if you want to come stand right here next to me, and then Steph, and then Mia. All right, well, we actually brought our own microphone today because in our classroom, we're learning how to talk in front of our classmates, and we're learning how to speak in front of others. We want it to be really comfortable. So one of the ways that we've been doing that is by using our microphone in class. So every morning, we use our microphone, and it helps us to feel more comfortable. And Stella, are you noticing a difference in our classroom? Yes. Um, people that were using quiet voices, every day they got louder and louder. Yeah. So we've gotten better and better every time we use this microphone. So we were going to bring, we weren't going to bring it, but then we thought we better bring this to show you guys what we do in our classroom. So uh, Mr. Ripley has pulled up a slide presentation show, and um, I have sent this to our admin and to, to our superintendent so that you guys um, can have a copy of what we're going to present tonight. So uh, my name is Ms. Greenier, and I've brought three kindergartners with me, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. You can say it in big girl voice. Charlie. Sit. Della. Leah. Excellent. You can go right to the next one. Can you see that part? It says a community. A community is a place we work, play, and live. Excellent. Got it. The people and places of every community are special. We Interviewed. Interviewed family, friends, and neighbors. 
and to learn about community. Okay, so we, uh, all of the kindergartners in Mrs. Roberts and Mrs. Greenier's class went home and interviewed family and friends and neighbors to learn more about community helpers. We created a slideshow presentation and I have that on here so that you guys can click on that later and, and look at it in great detail. It's over 60 slides. We are gonna just take a look at these girls' slides today so that you guys can get a little sample. Just right there. That page would be great. Okay, so Leah, can you tell us who did you interview? My dad. And where does your dad, what job does your dad have in the community? Working with dogs. Yeah, he works at doggy daycare at Wolfpack. So we have all of his information up there. And then we're gonna click. Can you pass it to Charlie? Right there. And Charlie, who did you interview? <coughs> and what does Tim do? He's a master He's a master Plumber. Yeah, and he came to Charlie's house and his work van, and Charlie was able to interview him and ask him all kinds of questions. <laughs> and so there's some photos. The yeah, there's some photos from his visit. Okay, can you pass it? And then. And Stella, who did you interview? My mom. And what is your mom's job in our community? A school psychologist. Excellent. I'm going to back out to our other presentation. So there are many slides here, and you guys can take a closer look at that, with some of, who some of the other people in our community. Um, the Eve students even interviewed Mrs. DeMassey from Fairhaven Grade School. So we have a lot of, lot of different community members. Next slide. All right, Charlie. And loud. We went. We went to the police station in Fair Haven. We uh, we did fingerprints. She's got it. She's got it. Thank you though for being helper. She's got it. We got to go into the. We got to go into the jail cell. We took a picture. We. On the police car, and we hold the shield, and you'll see Ellie, Austin, and Layton. Yeah, some of your friends, huh? Okay. Next slide. We played with the police officers, and we had a picnic with them, and we played with in the leaves with them. And if you click um, on that spot right there, there is a short video of our field trip. And you guys can check that out and see. Um, it has a picture of us going to the fight, uh, going to the police station as well as our time. Um, we had lots of police officers from the community meet us in the park. And we asked them to picnic with the police in the park. And they came and we had picnic lunches and we got to play in the leaves. And it was a really great time um, with our local police department. Yeah. You girls can we okay. made good luck cards for the field hockey, football, and soccer. Yeah, so our local sports teams made the playoffs. So this year we made good luck cards for the field hockey team and the soccer team and the football teams. And they all were able to go to postseason. And um, the cards were really, really well received. Um, we had uh, high school kids that were saying, we put ours on the refrigerator, we still have ours. And the girls soccer team was especially thankful. They sent us a return note thanking us and said that they could, they were arguing over all the great artwork and they loved it so, so much. All right, can you girls stand up? Next slide. Thank you, you board members. So we wanted to thank you because you have an important contribution to our community and a pretty thankless job. So thank you for doing what you do. Oh, that was a great job. Good job.
Oh my god, that was so cute. Thank you. You're welcome. Go to bed. Bye, Megan. Bye. Yeah. That's exhausting. Well, thank you for extending the invite. That was very nice. Um, so we will move on, I guess, to public comments. Unless there are any members of the public here in person, is there anyone online who has the public comment? Okay, moving on to correspondence then. Anything, Brooke? Nope. Nope. All right, number seven, we have no contracts or resignations tonight. Again, there's no policy updates, so we will go to Peter with an update from Buildings and Grounds, which met prior to this meeting. Peter? So we talked about the PCBs testing that will <clears throat> be happening. Um, and right now, all of our schools except for Benson got moved to April and June of 2023. As far as we know right now, um, it's an air quality test. So we'll be testing the air. It takes roughly, what was it, 15 weeks? Yep. 15 weeks from start to finish before you get results. Um, and then after we get results, more or less dictate if we have to or what we have to do. Um, we talked about we had some back sewer in the high school and this school has been taken care of. The problem will be fixed permanently as soon as parts come in. And um, we talked a little bit about the, um, the state's going to be looking at all the schools in all of Vermont, sending people down basically do a study on what needs are needed for infrastructure. Um, I think that's about it, unless there's something. And the Crystal. radon testing. Oh, radon testing. We don't have to do it, but we're starting to do radon testing. Chris is, um, he's done two, and he's gonna keep doing the radon testing at school. It's a test that we can do ourselves. So it's just a kit you buy at, on Amazon or Obershawn. Put it in the lowest part of the building, and you leave it there for how long was it? Uh, Forty-eight to like yeah, five days. Five days, and then um, you send it off, and then they send you back the results. So we had two sent off, but we don't have results yet. And those are required to be done by the end of the school year. Oh, they are required. Yeah. It's part of Act Seventy-two. Yeah. Okay. But we can just do this one ourselves. Yeah. So. But yeah. Okay. So that's what it was. We can do this ourselves. Yeah. We don't have to hire somebody. To come we checked with our consultant. And he's like, you can do it in house if you're comfortable with it. So that's what we're gonna, gonna do. Are there any questions for Peter? Are there any concerns for the infrastructure? Um, like, well, we don't really know checks. what. <laughs> right now, it, it seems like you're collecting information to see how much money needs to be spent <clears throat> on all the buildings in the whole state. <clears throat> so where they're gonna go with that? We don't know. Okay. It's, right now, it's just they're basically we sent information up about our building, but they're doing a study basically the way the state likes to study things. So mm -hmm. they're going to send an engineer down, and they're going to look at all the all of our buildings, all the insides, and everything. And and at some point, they're going to put all this stuff in the computer, and from there, who knows? It, they might be they might do it so that they have money for people. For school districts, mm -hmm. or we don't really know the end result yet. Right now. Thanks. Anything further for buildings and grounds? <clears throat> All right, Peter. Thank you. All right, moving on to number nine, which is the article warning. So I'll give a quick summary. I believe both versions of the article were in our packet. So. Um, <clears throat> what we're used to over the last few years is having the expenditure number um, along with spending per equalized pupil and then a comparative percentage about how that spending per equalized pupil has increased or decreased from the prior year. <clears throat> Since the legislature has reconvened in early January, there's been some, uh, some uh, proposed legislation to suspend the requirements to have to include uh, two of the three components, those being the spending per equalized pupil and then the percentage comparison. Um, 
the status of this proposed legislation is it has passed both chambers, right? Yes. And it is currently awaiting Governor Scott's signature. Uh, I believe he has until the end of this week to uh, vote yay, to um, let the law pass with no action or to veto it. So we're in a situation here where we have two potential options for our warning, depending upon the governor's action. And we have deadlines to get these to the printers to have them produced in time for the meeting. <clears throat> so I guess we just need to have a quick discussion as to what our preference is. And the first being, does anyone have a, pre a preference about whether we should explore the option, if it should pass, to have just the expenditures listed in our article versus the other components? I, okay. I like the, just the uh, expenditures without the comparison of the. Okay. Can we have a quick history? When did we change? This is how it used to be. Was just a yes, budget. I want to all say that I've ever remembered until all up. of a sudden they passed the one with the 2012 13th. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, it hasn't been that long. Been that so long. it hasn't been 10 I years. I, didn't always, I don't think it's been that long. I thought it was and more like 18, 17. Yeah, it's like four yeah. or five yeah. years, I think. Oh, like oh five I thought it's been no, I, think it's, no? I think it's been a little large. That, that all came about during that whole Before challenge that. for change. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was but, 2011, challenge for change. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's been that Anyways. long. Anyway. <laughs> it's well before I was. All right, so Peter uh, likes the idea of just having years, expenditures. Well before 18. Can I just ask, um, I'm just a little bit confused, I guess. So <clears throat> I understand what you just said, but it's not like you produce two of them and then whatever the governor says. We can approve two of them. Approve, you know what I'm saying? Or, I guess the, the board would take a position. And uh, if our position is we prefer the one that's just expenditures, mm -hmm. we could approve both. And then if the governor does sign it, we would go with just. I see. Because if he doesn't, then we have then we have, have the back. If he okay. doesn't sign it on by Thursday, it automatically mm. becomes law. I understand. Okay. Which may be yeah. what it that's probably that's probably what is going to happen is what we believe. So if he doesn't happen. sign the change to make it just expenditure by Thursday, it will just become law by itself on Friday. So oh, in other so words, it sunsets. It's, it gets rid of the other one. Okay. So do we not even have a choice then? It's if, if he's no, I, you can always, at the minimum, you have to include the expenditure budget language, but you can always do more. In your, okay, in so your you do language. have a choice. So you do have a choice. Okay. I would, I would, I mean, if you would like the new version <clears throat> with just the expenditure budget, I would approve both warnings and then let me work with the printer and see, because right now our deadline's Wednesday for the printer. So I don't even okay. know if I can push it to Friday. Um, and then kind of see what happens. Okay, what are other people's opinions? Len, did you have a comment? Yeah, I mean, I, I liked the, just the expenditure. Um, you know, last year was a prime example. Our expenditures were down, but our increase Per student was up and I think that's part of what killed our budget mm -hmm. um, and I think approving both because there are there is the remote chance that he could veto this instead of just letting it become law so I think you kind of have to go plan for the worst case scenario and hope that it passes does anyone else have an opinion All right, so in the absence of no one else speaking up, I, I guess the uh, the preference of the board is that we would prefer the simplified version, which is expenditures only. Certainly, I would play devil's advocate and suggest that does this create a transparency issue with our community? You know, does it give uh, someone the opportunity to come back and say, well, you know, you, you chose to, to not share the full story and, you know, spending per equalized people did go up and, and you took this, uh, this as an opportunity to kind of withhold information. That could always but be wait, an argument. Will, okay. But will it still be in the budget presentation? Yes. Correct. So we're okay. not withholding, we're withholding any information. We're being transparent. They, right. they choose not to read the budget presentation or pay right. attention. Right. That's on them. The, the other part of this, too, is 
when you look at it, when it has the per pupil spending and it has the percentage of change, to me, that is not being transparent because it is not giving a context to those numbers. And in the convoluted system that the state has created, without that context, those are deceiving numbers. Okay. The other thing is that um, my understanding is this this law was going to sunset next year anyways. This is just bringing it one year in advance. Right. Um, well, is there, well, there was a more, to, yeah, to yeah, FY29. Are you sure it was going to sunset? Well, to FY29, yeah. Well, this because yeah. this law, it suspends it for two years is the way I read it. Right. And then when it goes back, does it go back to the... No. It, it goes it's, away. With um, Act 173, or no, Act, Cheryl, it's Time. waiting, Time. waiting study. Time. It's it's yes. suspended to FY29 anyway. Well, mm -hmm. then they would have to decide what to do at that point. Um, so I think as part of this law, proposed law, also is reinstating some other COVID era town meeting flexibilities. So not reading the law. That also includes, I think, a couple of things. You potentially don't need signatures anymore to, to run for a board seat. Oh, I, I don't know about that. Like I'd have part. to look. I'd have to look at that. <laughs> 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 I'd have getting to look at getting that. your ten I signature deadline. <laughs> so. And can it be Maybe it's less. I don't know. I don't. Not have to have an in-person meeting, right? Right, you could be completely virtual, um, and you could also put um, the articles such as moderator, clerk, treasurer, all of those things back on the ballot. Th this which time, we did two years ago, and we did that last we year did as, that well. Last year as well. So, um, however, this year I reverted back to how we've normally done it, with the exception that I included a virtual link in the warning, so that people could attend virtually. They just can't vote. From, from the floor if they're attending virtually. And I was clear in the warning. So, I mean, the board really needs to give its opinion as to whether we approve of the more traditional format of having an in-person meeting with some of the <laughs> articles being voted on at that meeting. Because we do have an option to move it all to an Australian ballot, potentially. So, I guess if people don't speak up, uh stating otherwise then we'll just go with what brooke has presented here to us go ahead christine i was gonna say i i i agree with brooke um on her thoughts about the the warnings and i do also think that we should um do it the way that um we plan to do it this year not not with okay. Australian men. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we need some action then, right? So we would need a motion to approve both of these warnings pending governor action. So we do it at once. I can make a motion that will accept option two as long as it goes into law. And if it doesn't go into law, we'll do option one. Okay, you made that motion? I would say as, it, as long as it is, we have a decision by early Thursday <laughs> night because I can't wait any longer. Okay, so That's his motion. deadline, right? The 27th? Well, I mean, he could veto it. I mean, but. Than it would be. Yeah, so I make a motion that we use option two as long as we know the answer to it going to law by Thursday night. And if it doesn't go into law, we'll use option one. Okay. That sounds good. Second. Second. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion or questions on that? All right. Hearing nothing further, all those in favor of approving the uh, a motion made by Peter, please say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Okay. 
All right, moving on then to school choice numbers, which is action that the board needs to take annually, basically setting thresholds as to how many incoming tuition students we would take per year. Well, they're not tuition, but yes. And okay, because this is applicable to, to nine through 12. Yeah. And it has to be a, a cap of 10% uh, of resident students or 40, whichever is smaller. Yep. So in our case, it would be 36. Out. Yep. 36 out. How many in? Oh, it should say 40, 40 students in. in. You I forgot left, the word I in. I left yeah. the word in off. So it's 36 out, 40 in? Yes. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we accept 36 students into our district and let 40 students out of our district. No, you got it. No, you got it back. 40 in. 40 in? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. I think <laughs> we want more in and less in. Yeah. <laughs> I make a motion that we let 40 students into our district and 36 out of our district. Second. Any further discussion, questions on that motion? I have a question. Do we ever meet the threshold for in or out? No. Okay. I have a question. So when we have a student come in on this, who pays for that? We do? Or do we yeah, get? Yeah, we just, uh, we okay. don't get, money does not okay. follow the student. Okay. Except if they get special ed service. Well, right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, but, uh, like so do, we tuition. don't gain anything except for numbers by them coming in. Correct. And typically, our school choice out numbers are much higher than our school choice in. And yeah, the school choice out, are they still counted in our equalized pupil? Yes. That's form school. Yes. Yep. It just it says form instead she of might want to after just transfer. We put the spelling here from transfer form to from a school. See it, Tim? I see it. Okay. Oh. Is that a Cheryl comment or is it a you comment? That, that's a me comment. It's me, okay. But that, it's just a memo, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, if it was not going years. anywhere. No. All right, so we're in the motion to approve. Is there any further discussion? Thank you. <coughs> any questions? Okay. Really, you're good? Yeah. All right. What it is. All right. those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Okay, next you're looking for action to approve updates to three existing job descriptions. Is that correct? Two are existing job descriptions. One is a new job description. So um, student support coach, social emotional interventionists are current positions that we have in place in our, in our schools. Um, and they are, have just been some tweaks um, in, the, in those job descriptions. And certainly Chris and Casey and I um, can speak to any of those. Um, to be clear, the social emotional interventionist is a licensed educator, whereas the student support coach is um, a support staff um, position in, in the district. Um, and again, we currently have those throughout the building buildings. We're, we're just trying to bring some uniformity to training um, requirements um, and expectations for those different positions, especially as we implement um, multi-tiered systems of support district-wide for behavior and social emotional learning throughout the district. So I don't know, Chris and Casey, if you want to say anything to those, speak to either of those, but. I, I would just add that it's also looking at um, the MTSS for our academics as well. And, um, that coincides with the new regulations in special ed for specific learning disabilities, which require us to look at either patterns of strengths and weakness or students' response to intervention. And so um, I think that, uh, you know, this position is essential in terms of uh, being able to support us moving forward and ensuring that all of our students have access to um, similar systems of supports in all the schools. But Chris, you're talking about the MTSS coordinator, right? 
Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the one. That's the new position. Um, the other two I was speaking about were the ones that we, that we have just revised. Um, the multi-tiered system of support coordinator position would be a grant-funded um, position um, through ESSER um, and AWARE um, grants. And that's what Chris was just describing. So this is an additional position? The MTSS coordinator, yes. I have a question. For not, the MTSS coordinator, sorry, go ahead, Christine. I, I was just going to say, it, it's not in the budget, though, right? I know it's a right. grant funded, but it's not in the, it's budget, not in the budget currently. Correct. Um, I just had a question about what student-driven versus teacher-driven models are. If you could explain those differences, and then are the current are the schools currently in one model or the other? Are they blended? Which which job description for are the you? MTSS coordinator? It talks about experience with the student-driven um, model versus a teacher-driven model. I just didn't know what that was. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think there are times when we try to look to students to take a little bit more ownership in designing what it is that, you know, would be engaging to them within the confines of what the skill development would be. And so there's often a need to be able to present that in a way to an educator that feels like it's authentic and meaningful given what we're trying to follow and kind of a progression of learning. Mm -hmm. And so it just really is wanting to allow for that sort of, um, I guess, creativity that sometimes has to come in that that nature of taking a student's interest and trying to figure out how that can work within what you're really trying to get for a set of skills to be developed. Okay. That's. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. It, and I would say with these three positions, something that I've noticed in my short five years in a central office position as opposed to a building level position is when developing systems across an organization that have multiple schools, how you're bringing together systems and then trying to have them come from a, a singular location and place with a similar philosophy and ideology. And, and that takes time. And uh, so revising job descriptions is, is something that has to occur as you begin to develop a stronger system. Um, I think a lot of the work that happened with consolidation of boards um, were a little bit, I don't want to say lagging, but finding our footing still as it relates to curriculum and structures of support across the entire system. Um, sharing personnel, we met as a leadership team and we talked about how it is um, recently we've been able to use resources that are district resources, grant funded resources to really support different buildings in different ways and how in the past you may have had an individual employee at a building that couldn't have been used in another building because it was seen as the FTE at that building. And so a lot of these roles and positions are uh, trying to have us look at how we can share across buildings. Um, because even if the size of Benson and the number of students there might not allow for an FTE to be in that location, but there still might be needs. And so how can we develop these um, positions that are shared in different ways that are nimble, as mm -hmm. opposed to just being identified in a specific location. Thank you. Sure. So we can ask more questions, but we should probably make a motion to uh, accept these job descriptions. I'll make a motion to accept the job description for student support coach, social emotional and adventurous, and MTSS coordinator. Second. Any further discussion or questions? I got a question, Tim. Uh, the MTSS coordinators grant funding at this point through ESSER, you said? ESSER and AWARE, AWARE grant. I mean, this would be a position, although who, who knows if somebody's out there that we would we would like to hire this school year, like say, say March, to work with, to be able to work with staff um, you know, the remainder of this year through the summer um, 
and into next year as we implement um, Act 173. But again, I'm not sure who we would necessarily find unless there was somebody act, internally. This act is initiating this this uh, position. You think that well, the is helping with yes, helping with the implementation of Act and 173. And the grant funding is good for a foreseeable future. Or? Well, it's. We have enough money for this year and next year, oh. um, and then I think we'd have to reassess. Um, there are other pockets of money that are out there that I think we'll certainly look into, but um, there's, you know, no Good guarantees. For years at this point. Right. And you said the, all three are ESSER funded right now. Or would be? Uh, no, so, some of these, some of these other positions, we already have the other positions. They're locally They're funded, all local. except we have a couple that are funded through mm -hmm. Medicaid. Correct. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, do you set up on a, on a teacher salary structure? Um, this MTSS coordinator, yes, because it's a licensed oh, it's a employee. Licensed yeah. The other two aren't though. Uh, no, the no. interventionist is. The support coach is not. It's a support non-union support staff position. And in the MTSS job description, I believe we had added some additional days beyond the regular uh, teacher's uh, calendar. To do training over the summer, the, those Correct. types of things. I have a question. Uh, for the first two positions, it looks like there was a strikeout and then maybe some highlighted language. Uh, I'm assuming that's what changed within the job description. Um, there, there were some additional changes for some reason that didn't, um, I don't know, that didn't get um, corrected before it went to, went to the board. But yes, the, the red was definitely added and the other piece was um, struck. Um, since then, I've gone into those um, and accepted those final edits. Okay. I'm just a little amused by the ability to apply common sense understanding to carry out instructions. Were we lacking in, in that sort of common sense? In um, the, uh... th that has been a struggle with some of our positions, yes. Okay. So we have been adding that to our job descriptions. Okay. <laughs> we had joked that it's something that we had always wanted to see and we had never seen it in a job description until recently. And so we decided that it was an important thing to adopt as part of ours. I mean, who gets to decide what common sense is? And it's kind of subjective, isn't it? Well, no? it, it might be, I guess. I guess it depends. Yeah. All right. And then I guess my only other observation was um, the matter of evaluation. I noticed in the MTSS coordinator under supervision received, it does specify that it reports to and is evaluated by this person. Mm -hmm. So is there no evaluative evaluation mechanism in the first two positions? It doesn't say anything about there being an evaluation. Yeah, it, sh it should, well, supervision is by the principal. Mm -hmm. So like, um, for example, the interventionist would fall under the teacher's contract, so they'd follow the teacher evaluation model. Same with the uh, student support coach? They'd follow the um, support staff evaluation. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All those in favor of approving these updated job descriptions as presented, please say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? All right, so now we have a mid-year strategic plan update. Yes, so we sent this out to all of you. I don't know if you've had time to review it. There were certainly a lot of links in there. Um, and I, I don't know how you want me to take you through this, if you just want me to ask, you know, have you asked questions? I, I mean, many of these different areas or action steps are either completed or in progress. Um, there's no slideshow. No, I'm not, I wasn't going to do a slideshow unless you want me to. Well, we can put right it now, up. on the spot. <laughs> well, we can put this up, but um, I just wanted to kind of, I do this every year, just give you an overview of where we are in terms of 
our action plan. I, I think we've been moving along pretty well um, in terms of many of these things. Um, one of the things that has stalled a little bit is the portrait of a graduate. Um, we were going to use feedback from our strategic planning committee um, to develop that portrait of a graduate. Um, and we still plan on doing that. That's just been something that's put a little bit on the, on the back burner on this first part of the year. So. Well, I guess with that as an introduction, do any board members have uh, questions or they like to pursue uh, additional discussion on any of these matters contained within the strategic plan? I just had a question for Casey. Um, your advisory program, do you have a program in particular? Will it be created by someone in-house? What are you thinking regarding that? <clears throat> so I think it's mostly created in-house and uh, I would say that moving the middle school figuring out how it is we were going to design a schedule they have a time in their schedule that's called advisory and so um, we used aspects of a program called second step that we had specifically for middle school um, but then recognized that a lot of time needed to be spent kind of just getting to know students because people were coming from all different places and then that looks very different than at a high school where it's kind of embedded into what we call inquiry right now. And so there are students that are with an advisor. Um, and when we do kind of that advisory time, it's a little bit more PLP sort of work. So it's about trying to refocus that and think about how an advisor kind of can intersect with a time of the day that's kind of callback as well. So still trying to iron that out completely, but I guess it's more of an organic as opposed to buying something and have it be a package. The other interesting thing is how the schedules are created and, and looking at um, like teaching assignments and what can be considered kind of a program that you implement that's a part of your teaching schedule as opposed to something that's a part of a day that isn't really any prep. Right. Trying to work through that too. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? So Casey, I'll, I guess I'll direct my question towards you. Um, so again, strategic plan is something we have to do because we are a checkmark school and we have to take an action or that's, that's old stuff that I'm thinking of. This is something different. Yeah, I think it, that's what I was going to say. So we started with um, kind of revising our mission and vision, and we did that. We had a committee. Just Christina was on that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so it was really just, what is it that you wanted as a school district? And then that concluded in maybe May or June. Yeah. And then it was, what is the work that? should take place to support whatever you would hope you'd be creating for okay. students. So this is required by the state, yeah. contingent yeah. upon so what, so funding what you, streams or right. something so like that. So what are your action steps? And then buildings create continuous improvement plans, which are very specific to their data, but they also are within kind of the framework of the district vision and, and mission. Those are required. Um, by the state, so. But it's all this, connected. Yeah, I mean, th this is a plan to like show you what, what we're working on and to hold us accountable. These, these are the things that we have going right now. So we're not uh, doing a good job of holding you accountable, though. We're not asking enough questions right now. Are we? Well, I wondered, because there's so much to digest, and Walt's very happy that I invited him to a meeting that I have tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Persuaded him. Uh, one of the things I was wondering is, because there's so much information, if we took, say, strat the strategies under each goal, and we had kind of a dashboard of green, you know, did we meet, did we not meet, and then what would be the data or evidence? So if it would somehow be a little bit more user-friendly that you could 
click on something, see a green, like, oh, they must have made it. So then what did they use? Was it standardized test scores? Was it, you know, and then you could click there so that it was less 13 pages of narrative and a little bit more like, great, here's a hard number. What, what would you change next time? So, you could ask us that question or something. So we're trying, we're working with John Tanner right now, who's a national consultant on looking at different accountability metrics in addition to standardized testing. So that isn't the end all be all. What are the other things that we're, we're doing in, in district and what are our results? And so, and so Casey's talking about an accountability dashboard, which the school district in Kentucky has a pretty robust um, looking dashboard. And so um, they're going to connect with them um, tomorrow and, and talk about how they went about um, putting that together. So those are the types of things we're looking at to increase transparency of the things that we're working on it and make it more user friendly. Because um, certainly I don't think parents or, you know, really want to be reading through 13 pages of narrative, like, you know, so is there a way to, to boil that down? I think you just said it. Yeah. So the next update will be one page. Oh, oh. Casey, we're talking about yeah. one page. It's some sort of like know. color coding, one page. <laughs> Full of links. Links. It's going to have all links. Yeah. He'll have all links. Link will just take you to a video of Casey talking. So <laughs> clear. Well, I also think there's a big difference between as you read through this. Like there's your because this is pre-K through 12. Correct. Right. So to make this one page is pretty. No, that's not. That's not even cool. I don't want. I don't want to see that. But if you did like a a pre-K through five, uh -huh. a, a six, seven, eight, or pre-K through six, a seven, eight, or not. To show us what you're working on in each section, because this just puts it all into one. Right. So you really have to kind of read through like what what they're working on in each area. Right. But if they if it was a little more segmented into what you're working on each, and there's some things obviously that are pre-K through 12. I get that. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty. If you look at it, it's mm -hmm. pretty split out yep. between grade levels too. So that might be a different way to to show it as well. Yeah, and this this accountability framework is a several year. I mean, it's several years of, of work, and it's oh, yeah. just central office right now doing it. Yeah, eventually we're going to bring on the principals, but um, but this is an ongoing document. I mean, this yeah. So I would assume it would get bigger. Well, right, but I but I'm I don't think I want to. We started to draw. Yeah, Walters put up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Walters put up kind of an example of what it would. Pop could possibly look like. This was just the uh, example Casey found out of Kentucky. So I yeah. figured it might help kind of visualize. That was the what weekend find. <laughs> but I liked how it was kind of clean, right mm -hmm. ahead. And then you had the green. And then if you click on, you know, the links there, it takes you to a little bit more of a quantitative. Um, uh, I don't know if that'll appear. But anyway. So they can actually link the data to it? Yeah. It's the actual so, so we're going to visit with their folks. So that's what we're going to try to do. Out there, but obviously, you know, it's, it's I, also, I also think you've, I mean, I like the, the goals. Develop college and career readiness, right? You go down to the next one, you got a goal. Establish community engagement, service and partnerships. Like reporting on one of those at a time would be helpful too, right? We don't need to see all of them at once because they're all kind of ongoing pieces to each one. Yeah. But you know, split it into however many are there. Five. Five. I counted them. Yeah. You could take one initiative a month. That's what yep. I wondered too. Yep. And I said that to yep. Walt. Like if we had a standing agenda item, and we could just go through. I mean, I don't know how yeah. much right is four. too much talk of. Four is perfect. It's only four. Sort of well, that's each quarter. Yeah. Well, keeps four. it in for, for the month. Right. Yeah. Pick one. Yeah. Because to do it halfway through a year. And then at the end, right, can seem like a lot mm -hmm. to get through. So, do you do benchmarks quarterly? Benchmark testing quarterly? We do a trimester. Somewhat. So we have a fall, yep. a winter, and a spring. And that's what we were looking at talking about it today. If you could kind of mesh mm -hmm. the reporting out with yep. trimester scores. Yeah, that in the high school. Work. I mean, the different school yeah, yeah. quarters of yeah. high school. So. Um, so I guess that would be a next step. I think this is the second or third year that we've done kind of a mid-year and then just trying to figure out a better way to share and maybe have it be a little smaller at each time so it's not 
13 pages at once. I've seen and worse. I, <laughs> oh, I've seen way worse. But anyway, <laughs> um, but I would say that, like, for example, in the, where are we at here? Uh, strategy one, when you've got your update where you're talking about your curriculum and your KUD and learning progress, you know, that was updated in 2022, like those kind of things, maybe to have something where you're not redundantly putting, I, I mean, I understand the redundancy to it. I'm just wondering if that might be helpful to, if your goal truly is to eliminate reading. Mm-hmm, sure. Yep. I, I, I do not mean to be critical. I <laughs> no, no, honestly, no. I've tried to reduce volume of these kind of documents Further down, and it is, I, no, like, I applaud the individual who can do that because it is so challenging. Like, mm -hmm. We give him much harsher criticisms on his emails daily. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think this is incredibly informative. I guess a general comment, Casey, I mean, um, you know, how much time do you spend on something like this and is it is it time well spent you know i guess my my generalized take of administrators and and a lot of educators is you guys are really smart and you think a lot and you strategize a lot but do you really do the work or do you not spend enough of your time implementing and doing the work you know um is this a good usage of your time it's cathartic <clears throat> It's a reflection, right. so it, it's helpful. Okay. Um, it doesn't happen during the work day. Right. It's something we're doing it's on like the weekend, weekend. Or at Because, as you said, the the weekdays are action. People are here, so that's okay. when you do your work. So, um, taking a Saturday or Sunday to go through it is kind of reflective. It makes you feel like you are making some some gains. Because in sometimes some places doesn't always feel that way so mm -hmm. kind of completing something can make you feel a little bit better about the day-to-day -day. putting it on paper shows you if you did it mm -hmm. or not right. yep. there are holes or right. what did i miss or i said i yeah. did that and we share it amongst ourselves so that it holds us accountable yep. about did i do this did i forget you know <coughs> so but yeah it's not not a closed door in your office and do it for two days and have Stripping yourself offline right. from doing the other work it's all right, any other discussion on this strategic plan? I got one question. Go ahead. On the partners, castles, and university, in order to facilitate dual enrollment, but it says Linden Institute program offers students opportunity to earn associate's degree. On this, it says meeting plan for January with Brandon Kennedy. Is that from Castleton University? So yeah. we're looking into doing something similar. Yeah, we, we just met the other day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, Linden Institute has, VTSU as a new institution wants to expand into high schools. That's what they want to do. It's their bread and butter. Vermont high schools is what VTSU, that's how they make their money. So they, they want to expand into high schools. They've already done it in Linden, okay. at Linden Institute. And so we're just, Casey found that and we're kind of like trying to see what Fairhaven and Castleton can have for a relationship. Yeah. Not on in, Friday. Yeah, right. in Fairhaven Union High School, not at Castleton University particularly. What does that stand for, VTSU? Vermont State University. University. That's our new entity uh, as of okay. July 1st. So that's so where... Castleton's going to be now, right? Correct. So mm -hmm. that's where, like, instead of having access to just Castleton professors, you have access to all the professors at Northern Vermont, all the professors at VTC, and all the professors at Castleton. So you're saying that the college system wants to get in the business of now educating juniors and seniors in high school? Correct. Yep. The state of Vermont already offers two free vouchers. They're already trying. Hmm. So now, how do you reverse that and say, hey, here's your voucher. Go to Castleton. Hey, here's your voucher. Why don't you take it in your high school? And we offer right. it. So they want to offer more vouchers or they want to make early college more accessible and like mainstream? And Neither of those. You can never offer more vouchers because that's a state law, too. End of story. Okay. Early college will always be on a campus somewhere. Okay. The whole point of that is to be on a campus, not to be in your high school. But to have access to use your voucher at Fairhaven Union High School instead of at CCV or VT or Castleton or NVU or, or Linden, because the online offerings are so robust now after COVID 
the online class offerings are so robust, why can we not offer that? So it's virtual. School? There's not like someone coming into our school. To Could be hybrid. We talked about. Could be hybrid. We're not there yet. Okay. We're not there yet. Aren't there yet. And also, we're looking at different partnerships due to staff shortages and all, mm -hmm. of, all of that as well. So, yeah, does this touch on like AP class offering type stuff? Like, we don't have a critical mass of, of kids <coughs> anymore in AP history as seniors. So, now we're going to pair together with it, other it schools be, and uh, potentially form a critical mass of kids and do that online. I mean, right now, I mean, we're advertising for a high school math teacher been out for two or three weeks and we have zero applicants so far and remember Tim AP is College Board a private entity mm -hmm. offered curriculum dual enrollment is college they are not one and the same and they don't marry each other you can't offer AP US history through Vermont State University not how it works two totally separate ways to get college credit <laughs> college is a big business she should be a consultant. You should go on your own. <laughs> you're, you're a wealth of information. So I start inviting her to all the meetings. Julie <laughs> <laughs> just talks. And I, just, I, just, but, I, I very much want equity and opportunity for students. <clears throat> I don't know if it was in my last board report or the one before, but I listed all the courses that dual enrollment early college. Yeah, that was a lot of courses. Yeah, and so the thing that just early makes class. me so happy is to see students taking theater class, a gender studies class, just so many classes that we just don't have the personnel to offer. And so how can we, as Julie said, provide more of those opportunities on our campus? Maybe it's having a, a, a professor come over and meet with students twice a week, and then high school, I check in with the kids and make certain that they're ready, you know, doing the work that they're supposed to be doing, but really trying to find those ways to allow students to find areas of interest while they're with us. Take, take advantage of what's out there. Yeah. Well, I just think as a school board, is our job pre-K through 12, or is our job becoming pre-K through 10, and you've got these other things that are now coming in to fill a need and fill a gap for those Well, I have, yes to, I no. have to throw out there, though. That's you know. about college only. Well, so we're talking college only, so no, because not everybody follows that path, right? You don't want right. to, like, this is a path, <clears throat> an opportunity, a way to do it, but there are so many other paths and avenues for students that we still want to keep on, that need to be on the table for 11 and 12. But we've been doing interactive teaching at the high school since before 2000, <clears throat> when did Abigail graduate? Two? 2002. So it was just a really bad screen up in a corner mm. that came yeah. from UVM yeah. with yes. a professor basically yes. not really paying a whole lot of attention. Right. but. Where, and then a TA, yes. uh, a non-certified individual, sat in her classroom while she listened to the professor from UVM. So that, technolo that poor technology was still in existence here in 2002. Yeah. So it's not really a brand new concept. It's no. just a bet, in my opinion, it would be a better yes. way of doing it. Yes. Yep. But I can't tell you who was paying for it back then. I have no idea. That, <laughs> that Interactive Vermont Interactive. Yes. I don't know I do. where the funding came from. But. It was probably a pilot. Probably. <laughs> We've had middle schoolers. We've had Algebra 1 before this year. I mean, so for a long time, it was all online. Yeah. And so that was okay. not synchronous. That was asynchronous. Mm -hmm. Right. That existed in this district for a long time. Steve experimented with the different modalities of learning. Yep. Yes. I'm wondering, um, I saw the document attached to our email, but there wasn't a prompt to like review it in depth. And so I didn't take that time. Is there an opportunity in another meeting that we you didn't take that time? We all no. announced it. <laughs> I know. I just like, I saw it and I was like, well, I don't know what my, what my prompt is here. Like, what am I supposed to do? For great strategic, um, great question. For the strategic planning PDF. Yeah. So I did not go through it word for word, but I would like an opportunity to do that and then could we talk about it at another meeting, a future meeting? Or should I look at it and just reach out to Casey and... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you would love that. On the yes. weekends, though. On the time of the break. I'm Saturday now. Afternoon. I'll drive down Saturday. <laughs> you drove down today just for this meeting, right? You did. Oh. Meeting on I'm sorry. I canceled. But yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I, yeah. This is your first year, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll give you a pass. I'm going to need more than one year. <laughs> yeah. 
but yes. Okay, see, we have a few questions and it leads into this large discussion. Isn't that fun? Sure. Made the whole trip down here worth one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if nothing further, we'll move on from the strategic plan update. Thanks for putting that together. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're on to other business. So we had some uh, coffee hours this oh, last week. Oh, yes, Andrew, yes. Do you want to talk about those? Yes, we do. So who went to Castleton? I didn't go. I know you went to uh -huh. What's the... What's the two minute summary? There was only a couple. Boy, Lisa Cacciatore. Yeah. She just needs to be out and about I'm with a microphone saying. and like a notepad and like just going to every community she can talk. She was talking to everybody, people from Granville, people from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they anyways, all know about her book. They <laughs> all know. Yes, they know. But you know, yeah, you, you, you kind of get who you get. Right. We had a nice gentleman from Benson. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, very nice gentleman. New son. And, you know, and Sean Seguin came in the door, and he's a Castleton local who's always got something to say and something to talk about. So, yeah, no, it was it was fine. I mean, it is what it is. I think that, A, we, it was a really slippery morning, right? Like, it was not good weather. So a lot of people who potentially would have gone out for a cup of coffee were not going anywhere that morning. So, but other than that, it was, you know, we sat around, had a nice conversation. Yeah, but Friday was a full house. Good. So That's I don't know. At the Wooden, wooden Soldier. Soldier. Nice. Oh, wow. So sure. Tara, Chris, Rick. Yep. They, so they were all there. So Rick, I, I want to hear your. I want to hear your version. Ooh, Rick's version. I very good. Do much. I'm not all the bosses here. <laughs> Pretty sure that, all the people yeah, there. He stayed in the back. corner and had his tea. And so tea. there must not have been a lot of sports going on, huh? Because I think huh? they would have been rather bothered by that. Their sports conversation. No, they got there. No, they, they, no it was it was pretty. Maybe we had twenty, 20 people. people. Oh, it, it was it was probably the most fun I've had all year. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't know what that says about me, but I really, I really enjoyed it. Okay, cool. It was yeah. really good conversations. I don't know if Casey or Cheryl. Yeah, I mean. Way in. I mean, it was it was great. great. Yeah, it was great. great. I introduced Paul Jardine. To oh, Casey. Paul Jardine! Oh, that was fun. <laughs> He's such a great guy. Oh, that's fun. Uh, <laughs> got a question? Awesome. I said, let me introduce you to Casey. <laughs> I just kept saying, did you answer his question? <laughs> <laughs> Even Brooke said that to you. Because I went this way. I said, I think you pulled the long before, before then I got to the question. You I don't even know if you had to talk <laughs> about rattles. I, I think talk I about rattlesnakes. <laughs> Did you talk about rattlesnakes ever? No. Oh, if you ever took a chance. I said, just bring up rattlesnakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got Paul. I think he oh, might come to one of the wheels. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yes. awesome. So, His mom was a long time. Yes. Yeah, long so, time. You said. Actually, I mean, it, it was it was wonderful. It was, it was really years. enjoyable. <laughs> it was great. Two, we, had, we had two select that came. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It so was, we got <coughs> feedback or we just educated people? Um, oh, we got feedback. Educated. It was a it was very yeah. conversational. Yeah. Folks so yeah. ask questions. Um, no, yeah. I think you're new. Uh, well, it's probably online. I don't know. But communications. Oh, Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, Lisa. Lisa. Same deal. She and there was really enjoyed it. See? I yeah. just yeah. it the same yeah. account. <laughs> she met a lot of people and talked to a lot of people. I don't remember. Got a lot of input, I think. For the petition yeah. running for Fairhaven's yeah. board. Um, oh, good. Uh, um, was it James, James Henderson? Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah? So you got somebody running for Fairhaven. Okay. You should give yeah. Lisa a microphone like Courtney had. Yes. 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 Fling it out. Yeah. Yes. 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 Valley microphone. Yep. No, we should bring those three yeah. little kindergarten yeah. kids out. Yes. Roll them around. <laughs> so we go to we go to Buxton's on Friday and the Castleton Senior Center. So if anybody would like to join? That's this Friday. This Friday. I'm going yeah. to Castleton. All right. <laughs> what time's Bucks in? 7.30, I think. <laughs> what about the wheel in? Wheel in's the following week. I don't remember what day off the top of my head. And I don't, and, and Julie, I'm not sure. Were you going to set up something at the fire department? I tr am trying. That's a nut to crack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, no pressure. I'm <laughs> trying. So, yeah. We are so, on fire. February 1st. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but no, it was v very good. Good. It was, awesome. it was great. These are better attended than the listening tours. 
right? Yes. Yeah. Doing this yes. is better than the listening. Yes. Yeah. And I actually, I on their own turf. If I had enough time, I'd go every week. It was, it was great. Well, it's true, though. It's very late to be on the road turf. So as we enter the, the last month before uh, vote, <clears throat> is, there, is there any other events that we're going to schedule or we're just going to do these last few uh, coffee hours and that's going to be that's going to be it? Well, I'm I'm like doing the Fairhaven grade school PTO meeting. I mean, there's there's other events we're doing. I just I personally can't fit like much more in my yeah. in my schedule, but there's you know, definitely open to doing some other things, definitely open to going back to the Wooden Soldier since we had such a great turnout there. And let's see what kind of turnout we get at the at the others. Um, Bird's Eye, I don't think, was as conducive either to the conversation. Yeah, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I'd be a better fit. I can have Lisa uh, reach out. Bits. Yes. So where? It's a whole, Bombay Bombay Diner. whole different demographic. That's a whole different Bombay. demographic in a place. What do you mean? It's Bob and Z, not Cass and Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Bob and Z Diner. We could go to Hydeville. Hydeville. And, and Lisa <laughs> and I were talking about doing pop-up events like at Shaw's or the Dump. Um, <laughs> go to the Dump. You want to do Oh, but we're waiting for better weather. <laughs> <laughs> better Dump weather. Uh, wasn't there talk about one of us speaking or someone speaking at each of the town meetings? Yes, I, that... I, I think that would be great if somebody could say something at each of the town they meetings. They have to invite us or they have to give us permission to well, speak? Well, if you're... Somebody's got to give yeah, us Yeah, somebody's going to have to okay. give you... Well, the moderator just gives the you... moderator says... My husband. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? And Julie's husband says, of course it is. <laughs> of course because, it is. because those meetings yeah, are all on the 6th, right? Usually it's... I, mean, I remember we did that, Julie... Um, I think it was like um, a couple of years ago. Buses before. were canceled, yeah. or yeah. there was another contentious issue. Yes. Maybe actually, I think it was one of the first year that the um, Act Forty Six, the merger. No, the the warning change. The warning change. Oh, okay. So yeah. I mean, I, I can be present at Castleton's town meeting, yeah. and we. Can, I go every year anyway. We can ask your yeah. husband if we can speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that was something that did that we've heard from folks just last week that they would appreciate hearing about some of the school stuff at the at the town meetings. And a lot of the towns are going back mm -hmm. to non-virtual, right? That's my understanding. In person although I this year, correct? Checked in with I thought that I read that in the little dense newspaper yes, we have. That I believe so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, is there any other other business? Brooke, um, the last time when the budget didn't pass, I think the principals did a great job. Yep. Are we going to do that again? I yes, that was we're, going very to do, we're going to do that. Also working with the union to um, last, last time and the second time around, they called all the union members within the district to make sure that they were getting out to vote, um, even ones that don't teach in our district. And, and my understanding is that is the NEA A's plan again um, this time the first time around so um, so I think that's happening the other thing that actually we were just talking about this morning and I have not spoken to principals about this yet so this will be news to them but you know really trying to push regis voter registration um, and so Lisa's working on something um, for that, um, for us to push out around that because it's very simple to register for, to vote. And what we're finding is a lot of our parents are not registered voters. So try, really trying to get um, them registered. So and right? do you do a call with the, I'm sorry, I didn't, no, but just... a call with all the registered voters also on top of that? Like, well, like we not... have like 25 we divvy it up so we have like 25 people that we all call no they don't we forget don't, we don't do that tomorrow. but, but i i would i send out a school messenger mm -hmm. we do vote, that too you know vote tomorrow but i don't we don't we don't do that though. well if anyone's eager to do that i will say that you end up having interesting conversations and i do know that it promotes you know some we've voters. had a challenging time getting voter checklists from all of our oh, accounts okay. and things so Okay. So you can do same something. day registration and stay mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yeah. So that's why we're going to try to promote that with our parents. So you're actually going through a voter list, comparing it to your parent list, and then having a secretary call those people. No, I wasn't. I wasn't having a secretary call 
those folks, but I mean, just sending out a campaign, kind of, mm -hmm. if you're not registered to vote, please register to vote. This is, this is why, um, because I know um, anecdotally from talking with even some of you, a lot of our parents um, are not registered voters. Um, and just a little perspective, this is like years ago numbers, but, but I think about 4,300 people in the town of Castleton, not including Castleton University. 2,900 voters. You mean 4,300 4, that were eligible are, are, age that wise live or in the population. residents in yep. the and the right only age group? 2,900 that are registered. Because I only have to get yeah. 29 signatures, yeah. which is 1% of yeah. the registered. Yep. So that just gives you an idea. Yep. So really trying to push that. Mm -hmm. Certainly welcome to other. Welcome to hear other ideas what we can do. And next month we have one regular meeting and Correct. then the annual meeting. Correct. Okay. All right. Any other business people? All right. Is there a need for executive session? So what's on the agenda for next time? I think preparation for the annual meeting, for sure. Um, we will have finance meeting um, prior to where I probably will be talking about non-union um, salary increases. Um, I don't know. I, I think there'll be some some resignations too, because um, we just had some retirements that just came in that will be on the next agenda. Um. Okay. All right, anybody else have any uh, business at hand? Um, I just had one thing. I know that we're going to talk about this, but is it going to be right after the vote that we talk about the number of representatives from each town? I just want to make sure that's a want that issue don't you well i just when i look at how many openings there are it just yeah. doesn't make any sense that we're struggling with a quorum because we have you know x number of individuals yeah. that yeah. should be here but if we don't have people who are actually filling those spots obviously they can't be here and i think it does put a lot of onus on us to make sure that we're here from a quorum standpoint i mean not that we're not going to be here i don't mean it that way but you know if Somebody really doesn't feel well. Sometimes you're more provoked to attend. If well, we're going to reorganize. So it anyway, first, I just and I think it's a priority of, of Brooke to put together some uh, suggestions mm -hmm. and options for the board to act on very quickly. Mm -hmm. within, mm -hmm. I just know it, the new year. it was a very stacked list that you presented in this packet. When there's one town, I can't, I won't say or I can't remember, but um, that I believe has reopenings. <laughs> so that's you know, we need to find two anyway. Trying to find three there plus one in each other town yep. is really um We have had a few, not in West Haven that I know of, but some of the other towns we have, have had some folks pick up some petitions. So Great. I'm <clears> eager <throat> to good. see what Monday yep. or Tuesday brings. Yep. But, but I'm just I, I'm just saying I uh, I hope that we do something with those slots if we don't get anything after this. Because we've talked about it for a couple of years. Oh, the other thing for the agenda in February will be the food service, right, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. Contracts, we have to go out to bid on that again. Yeah, that, what happened to that issue? Um, well, you we were solved working it. With, you we were solved it by... Well, they were going to quit. Well, we solved it by <laughs> agreeing to go out to bid this spring. Okay. Essentially. Yep. Okay. So we will make it through the year. Mm -hmm. All right, so we could take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.